My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we'll talk about how to multiply and divide fractions. Fractions and mixed numbers to be uh, to be precise. Let's do the first problem. The very first one we have is we are to take 2 and 5 8 and multiply it by 2 and 2 7 2 and 2 7 First thing first, first thing we need to do here before we can actually go about multiplying these two numbers is to convert this mixed fraction into what is known as improper fraction. Let's look at the first one first. The first one we have is 2 and 5 8 which of course is same as 2 plus 5 8. This one has a denominator of 8, this one has a denominator of 1. We cannot simply add these two numbers the way they are, they have to have the same denominator and we do that by multi multiplying and dividing the the 2 by 8 over 8. 8 over 8 is just 1. So now we have 2 times 8 which is 16. 16 plus 5 is 21. So we end up with 21 over 8. And of course the quicker way would have been simply multiply 8 times 2 which is 16. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 5 is 21 which is what exactly. But that's where it's coming from. So it's 21 over 8. Let's look at the second one which is 2 and 2 7. Same exact logic is going to apply. 2 can be written as 2 over 1 and this is plus 2 7. This has a denominator of 1, this one has a denominator of 7. We cannot add them together, so we need to multiply top and bottom by the first part by 7. 7 over 7 is 1, so we're not changing anything, we're multiplying it simply by 1. So now we have a denominator of 7 in both parts, and here we end up with 7 times 2, so we end up with 14 plus 2 over 7, which is 16 over 7. And of course the quicker way would have been simply to do 7 times 2 which is 14 plus 2 is 16, 16 over 7. So we have our number here. The first one is 21 over 8. I, I left no room I, I left no room at all for myself. Let's continue here. So we have 21 over 8 which is the first one right here. This part boils down to 21 over 8. And then 2 and 2, 7 boils down to 16 over 7. 16 over 7. That's it. We are almost done. We see 8 on the top and we see 16. We see 8 on the bottom, we see 16 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 8. When we divide top and bottom by 8, 8 is going to drop out and 16 becomes 2. And of course it doesn't drop out, there's a 1 here. But we don't have to write the 1 because everybody knows that the 1 is there. Same thing, we see 21 on the top and 7 on the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. 7 is going to go away and 21 is going to become 3. So we end up with 3 times 2 and the final answer is 6. The final answer is 6. Let's do one more. The next one, number two. Number two. Three and three fifth. Three and three fifth times six and two thirds. Let's look at them individually first. Three and three fifth. Three and three fifth is same as three plus three fifth. 3 plus 3 fifths, and of course we need a denominator of 5, this 3 can be written as 3 over 1, and we need a denominator of 5 because this part has a denominator of 5, so we need to somehow get a 5 here, and we do that by multiplying the first part by 5 over 5. So now we have 5 times 1 which is 5, and on the top we end up with 5 plus 5 times 3 which is 15, so we end up with 15 plus 3, 15 plus 3, over 5 which is 18 over 3 which of course we could have done very fast by simply realizing that it's just 3 times just let me write this 3 a little bit better there we could have simply multiplied 3 times 5 which is 15 plus 3 that's exactly what we have here 15 plus 3 let's do the next one 6 and 2 third 6 and 2 third can be written as 6 over 1 plus 2 third multiply top and bottom by 3 and that's where we get that's where we get 6 times 3. 6 times 3 plus 2 is going to be 18. 6, plus, 6 times 3, which is 18, plus 2 is 20. So we get 20 over 3. That's it. We have our answers. First one is 18, 18 over 3. The first part here is 18 over 3. The second part here is 20 over 3. 20 over 3. Something is not right here. Unless that's what it's supposed to be. Apparently that's what it is. 
This is not 18 over 3, this is 18 over 5. We have a 5 here, not a 3. Of course not a 3, because had it been 3, we would have reduced it to 6. That's it. So we have 5 at the bottom, we have 20 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. Divide top and bottom by 5. The 5 is going to drop out and 20 becomes 4. We have 18 on the top, we have 3 on the bottom. They have a common factor of 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. When we do that, 3 goes away and 18 becomes 6. And final answer is 6 times 4, which is 24. Let's do the next one, number 3. Number 3. Number 3 has to do with division. Has to do with division. Here is what it is. 4 and 5 7 divided by 3 and 2 third. Let's see what we can do. So 5 and 4 and 5 4 and 5 seventh is what we have. 4 and 5 seventh. And that 4, if you want to write it as a with a denominator of 7, this is basically 4 plus 5 7, but it's 4 over 1. We want a denominator of 7, so we must multiply top and bottom by 7. And now we end up with 7 times 4, which is 7 fours are 28, 28 plus 5, 28 plus 2 would be 30, and then 33. So we end up with 33 over 7. Let's see what we end up here. 3 and 2 third is same as 3 over 1 plus 2 third, multiply top and bottom by 3, and we end up with 11 over 3. And as always, the most straightforward way is simply multiply 3 times 3, which is 9, which is exactly what we have here. 3 times 3 plus 2, right there, 11 over 3. Same thing here, 4 times 7, which was, that's just what we have here, 4 times 7, 4 times 7 plus 5. So we end up with 33 over 7, 33 over 7, divided by 11 over, 11 over 3. Now what do we do next? When we have one fraction that is being divided by the other fractions, so what do we do? Let's find out, shall we? Let's put it here. When one fraction is divided by another fraction, what do we do? We take the first fraction, we take we take the first fraction. We take the first fraction, in this case this one, 33 over 7, we take the first fraction and multiply it, multiply it by the, multiply it by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Multiply it by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And actually, we don't actually have to memorize this thing. We don't actually have to take uh, take my word for it. We can actually do do it out. We can do out a simple example to actually see that what, what, what we're saying here is true. Oh, I just erased the bloody thing, didn't I? For example, let's look at a simple example here. How about 81 divided by 9? But we know 81 divided by 9 is 9. So if you were to divide 9 by 6 divided by 2, well 6 divided by 2 is 3, so it's 9 divided by 3, which is 3. So we know the final answer is 3, which means, which means if we were to follow this rule here, we should get, we should get 3 at the bottom, uh, we should get 3 at the end. Let's see if we do it or not. 81 divided by 9, 81 divided by 9, and then this division is going to convert into a multiplication sign. We take the second fraction, when one fraction is being divided by on the fraction, we take the first fraction, 81 over 9, and multiply it by the reciprocal. We turn it upside down. Reciprocal means turn it upside down. 6 over 2 becomes 2 over 6. And when we do that, we better get 3 at the end, because we know the answer is 3. 81 over 9 is 9, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we know that at the end we should get 3. Let's see if we get 3 here or not. We see 9 on the top here, uh, 9 at the bottom here, we see 81 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 9. If we divide top and bottom by 9, 
UD1 becomes 9 and 9 drops out. We see 6 at the bottom, we see 9 at the top, let's divide top and bottom by 3. We do that, 9 will become 3 and 6 will become 2. And this 2 at the bottom will cancel out with that 2 at the, at the end and we finally get 3, which is exactly what we knew we should have gotten. So that's how the system works here. We take the first fraction and we multiply it by the inverse, by the reciprocal of the second fraction. That's what we need to do here. I need to raise it now because we need the room. So here we had one more time very quickly. 4 times 7 is 28, 4 7 is 28, 28 plus 5 is 33. So we end up with 33 over 7 divided by 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 divided by 3 which is going to be same as 33 over 7 times 3 over 11. 3 over 11. This thing is turned upside down. Now we see 33 on the top, we see 11 on the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 11. 11 drops out and 33 becomes 3. And that's it, we're done. It's 9, 3 times 3 is 9, so final answer is 9 over 7. And we cannot leave the 9 over 7 as 9 over 7 because this is an improper fraction. The top is more than the bottom. 9 over 7, 9 over 7. Final answer, final answer is going to be 9 over 7, which is the same as 7 over 7 plus 2 over 7. And of course, 7 over 7 is 1, so it's 1 and 2, 7. The final answer is 1 and 2, 7. Let's do number 4. Question number four. Four and a half times two and two third. Well, four and a half, four and a half is going to be same as, see we need the 2 at the bottom, so this 4 can be written as, this 4 can be written as 8 over 2. So it's 2 times 4 which is 8, plus 1 which is 9, so we end up with 9 over 2 here, times, same thing here, this 2 that we see here, this 2 can be written as 6 over 3, because we have 3 at the bottom here, 6 over 3 plus 2 over 3, that's what we have here. That's where, we get, that's where we get 6 from. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 which you get 8 over 3. So this becomes 8 over 3. The rest is very simple. Divide top and bottom by 2, 2 drops out, 8 becomes 4. Divide top and bottom by 3, 3 drops out, 9 becomes 3. It's 3 times 4 which is 12. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. 5, 7. divided by 14 15 14 15 there's nothing here to do they are not written in mixed fraction they are just written as a regular fraction here so we can simply do our thing here so we have 5 7 divided by other fractions when one fraction is being divided by other fractions we take the first fraction 5 7 and we multiply it and we multiply and we multiply it by the reciprocal of the second one. Reciprocal of the second one is going to be 15 over 4. And we multiply 15 over 14. 15 over 14. And we multiply it. 15 over 14. Something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong or perhaps not. 15 over 14. Oh sorry, this is not 5 7, this is 7 5th. It is 7 fifth because the things were not working out the way they were supposed to. Because we have to be able to start killing things, you understand? This 7 on the top and the 14 on the bottom, the 14 on the bottom is going to take out the 7 and the 14 becomes 2. This 5 at the bottom and 15 on the top, the 15 and 5, let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 is going to drop out and this is going to become 3. The answer is 3 over 2, which is same as 1 and 1 half. 1 half, 1 and 1 half. 3 over 2, which is 3 halves, 3 halves, and you have 3 halves, 3 halves, of course, the same as 1 and 1 half, because 2 halves make a 1. So 3 halves is 1 and 1 half. Let's do one more. Number 6. Number 6.
3 and 6 seventh times 4 and 2 third. 4 and 2 third. Let's see what we can do. Now that we're getting a hang of it, we don't have to actually do the baby steps. We can simply do the direct method. It's going to be 7 times 3, which is 21. 21 plus 6. We get 7 times 3, which is 21. Plus 6 over 7 times 4 times 3. 4 times 3 plus 2 over 3. 4 times 3 is 12. So here 21 plus 6. 21 plus 6 is going to be 27 times 7. 27 divided by 7, that is. And here 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. We get 14 over 3. Isn't it nice how numbers work out here? We see 7 on the bottom. We see 14 on the top. Let's divide top and bottom by. Let's divide the top and bottom by 7. If we do that, 7 drops out and 14 becomes 2. We see 3 at the bottom. We see 21 or 27 on the top. They both have a common factor of 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 drops out and 27 has 9 3's. 9 3's. 9 3's are 27. So we end up with 9 times 2. Final answer is 18. Final answer is 18. Let's do one more. The next one is 3 and 1 fifth plus 1 and 3 eighth. And this is not plus, this is multiply. We learned how to add and subtract. We learn how to add and subtract fractions the previous two days, the day number 50 and day number 49. Today we're learning how to multiply them. It's a multiplication sign. Multiply them. So it's 5 times 3, which is 15. 5 times 3, which is 15, plus 1 over 5, plus 1 times 8, plus 3 over 8. We end up with 15 plus 1, 15 times 3, uh, 5 times 3, which is 15, 15 plus 1 is 16. We end up with 16 over 5 times, I did it again, it's not an addition sign, it's a multiplication sign. 1 times 8 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, so we get 11 over 8. Let's divide top and bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 8. We do that, the 8 drops out and 16 becomes 2 and that's about all we can do. That's about all we can do because they're all prime numbers. 2 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, 11 is a prime number. Not only they're all prime numbers, but even if they were not prime numbers, they have no common factors. What I'm trying to make you understand is that there is no point in wasting our time looking for a common factor because if you realize that they're dealing with prime numbers, obviously they have no common factors because they are not divisible by anything except one in themselves. So 2 times 11 is 22. We end up with 22 over 5, which of course is the same as 20 over 5 plus 2 over 5. And 20 divided by 5 is 4, so we end up with 4 and 2 fifths. The final answer is 4 and 2 fifths. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.